Part 2 Lower Arm and Hand Anatomy In this video section, you will discover the lower arm and hand anatomy. I will make a drawing of the lower arm and hand in the pronation position. This position is when the palm of the hand is facing downward. Some art students feel the pronation position is difficult to draw. They may find this to be a challenge because they do not fully understand the bone and muscle anatomy of this part of the human body. In this drawing, you will see, once again, how the arm anatomy works. There is only one bone in the upper arm. It is called the humerus. This bone becomes wider at its lower end. This widening is to accommodate the elbow joint. At the lower end of the humerus, there are two bony forms. One resembles a spool and the other looks like a ball. The spool-shaped part connects with the ulna, which is the elbow bone of the lower arm. The elbow joint is called a hinge joint because the ulna swings at the lower end of the humerus like a hinge. The ball-shaped projection of the humerus connects with the other bone of the lower arm, the radius. The head of the radius is wheel-shaped, so it makes a perfect connection with the ball-shaped projections of the humerus. In the pronation position, the radius rotates around the ulna and overlaps it from above, forming an X-shape. The extensor group of the lower arm originates at the outer, lower edge of the humerus. It travels downward to the back side of the hand. The main function of this muscle group is to extend the hand. You can see that the main mass of these two groups of muscles is located in the upper half of the lower arm. At the lower half of the forearm, these muscles become tendons. That is why the width of the arm near the wrist is defined by the width of two bones, the ulna and the radius.